should a company outsource their products or services? Well, what is outsourcing? Outsourcing is also called the make or buy decision. Management must decide whether to buy a product or service from a supplier or produce it in-house. This decision should always be made after completing a full incremental analysis, applying all the steps in the process, from explicitly stating the alternatives right down to making a recommendation. Let's apply those steps in an example to demonstrate the make or buy decision. George Inc. manufactures a component which is used in the production of their finished goods. The cost of producing 28,000 components, which are all used in producing their finished goods, is as follows. Direct materials, $84,000. Direct labor, $140,000. Variable manufacturing overhead, $98,000. And fixed manufacturing overhead, $112,000. George Inc. has received an offer from a supplier to provide the component at a cost of $12.75 each. Should George Inc. continue to make the component or should they buy the component from the supplier? Step 1 is to explicitly state the alternatives. In this case, the alternatives are to either continue to make the component in-house or buy it from a supplier. Step 2 is to determine which costs are relevant. Remember that relevant costs are ones that change between alternatives and are future costs. Let's analyze each cost individually and indicate if it applies to the make or the buy decision. We'll highlight costs which are incurred to make the component in yellow and the costs incurred to buy the component in green. The direct materials to make the component are $84,000. If we buy the $28,000 from the supplier, we'll incur no direct material costs. If we decide to make the $28,000 in-house, we incur $84,000 in costs. This cost changes between alternatives, and it's a future cost. So direct materials are relevant costs, and we incur them to make the component. The direct labor costs are also incurred to make the component $140,000. If we buy the component from a supplier, we'll incur no direct labor costs. This cost changes between alternatives and it's a future cost, so direct labor is relevant and is incurred if we make the component. The variable manufacturing overhead costs are also incurred to make the component $98,000. Again, if we buy the component, zero costs. This cost changes between the alternatives and again it's a future cost, so variable manufacturing overhead costs are relevant and they're incurred if we make the component. The fixed manufacturing overhead costs are $112,000. Are these fixed costs relevant? We know that fixed costs are fixed regardless of the level of activity, which in this case is the number of units 28,000. Whether we produce these 28,000 units or we buy the 28,000 units from an outside supplier, there is no indication in this question that our fixed costs will change. This means that the fixed costs do not change between alternatives. These fixed costs are fixed, well, within the relevant range. Because they don't change between alternatives, fixed costs are irrelevant. We'll ignore these fixed costs for purposes of our incremental analysis. Finally, the $12.75 per unit to buy the component from an outside supplier. Is it a relevant cost? If the component is made in-house, these costs will be zero because we don't buy any components. If the component is purchased from an outside supplier, the buy option, it will cost the company $12.75 each. This cost changes between alternatives and it's a future cost, so this cost is relevant and we have to include it in our analysis of the buy option. Did we miss anything? We didn't analyze the 28,000 components. True, it's identical between both alternatives. 28,000 components are either made or bought. However, we need it for our calculations, so this information is relevant. We now have all the relevant information. 28,000 components, direct materials 84,000, direct labor 140,000, variable manufacturing overhead 98,000, and the supplier offering $12.75 per unit. We can move on to step 3 and compare the relevant revenues and costs to determine the difference. This is our quantitative analysis. 
we'll use a chart format with column 2 as the make option, column 3 as the buy option, and column 4 as the difference between the two alternatives. We'll start with the direct materials of $84,000. If we make the component, we will incur $84,000 of costs. If we buy the component, we incur none of these costs. $84,000 minus zero is equal to $84,000, which is the difference. Next is the direct labor costs of $140,000. If we make the component, we incur these costs. If we buy the component, we incur none of these costs. $140,000 minus zero is equal to $140,000 which is the difference. Moving on to the variable manufacturing overhead costs, which is shortened to variable MOH, we see the same thing. If we make the component, we incur the $98,000 of costs. If we buy the component, zero. $98,000 minus zero is equal to $98,000, which is the difference. That's it for all the costs to make the component. The cost to buy the component now has to be added. $12.75 per unit multiplied by 28,000 units is equal to $357,000. If we look under the make column, the cost of the buy component is zero because we would not buy any if we were going to make them. The cost to the buy component under the buy column would be the full $357,000. Zero minus $357,000 is equal to negative $357,000, which we place under the difference column. We now have to add all the columns. Under the make column, the total is $322,000. The buy column, $357,000. And under the difference column, negative $35,000. What? exactly does this mean? Well, the difference is really equal to the increase, positive, or decrease, negative, in operating income for the company. In this case, the company's operating income will decrease, because the number is negative, by $35,000 if the company decides to buy the component. The company, given this information, should continue to make the component because it will save them $35,000 in operating income. Management, of course, would still want to consider qualitative factors, step four in our incremental analysis steps. But since no additional information was provided in the question, that's kind of difficult to do. However, we can speculate. If the company continues to make the component, they would be able to ensure that the quality of the component is high, that there are no issues with timely delivery of the component when it's needed in the production process. The company would be able to address demand if there is a change in the volume of components needed, and over time, they would be able to control the cost of the components because they're the ones making it. These are all positive qualitative factors of continuing to make the component, which they would lose if they decide to outsource to another supplier. Given both the quantitative and the qualitative analysis, management should recommend that the component continue to be made in-house. This is, of course, step five of incremental analysis, making a recommendation. But what if management had an opportunity to do something with the space and resources that they previously used to produce the component? In that case, the analysis would have to include opportunity cost. What is an opportunity cost? When management chooses one action, they often have to give up the benefit of another action. The benefit they give up is called an opportunity cost. This is often a difficult concept to understand, so let's just add it to our existing example in order to demonstrate opportunity cost. Assume the same information for George Inc. as previously noted, but let's also assume that if the company were to buy the component, they would be able to rent the space that was previously used to produce the component to an outside company for $40,000 per year. Given this new information, should the company make or buy the component? Our previous information would still hold 28,000 components, direct materials of $84,000, direct labor of $140,000, variable manufacturing overhead, $98,000, and an offer from a supplier to provide the components at a cost of $12.75 each. 
In addition to that, the space which the company previously used to produce the component, they can now rent to an other company for $40,000 a year. This would mean that George Inc. would earn $40,000 of rental revenue if they rented the space. How would this impact our analysis? On our chart, we would show the same information for direct materials, direct labor, variable manufacturing overhead, and the purchase price from the supplier. However, if the company continued to make the component, they would incur an opportunity cost, which would be the benefit they give up by choosing to continue to make the component. What do they give up if they choose to continue to make the component? They give up the income they would have earned had they bought the component. If they had bought the component, they would have earned $40,000 in rent revenue. If they continue to make the component, they give up the benefit. Therefore, under the make column, we would add an additional cost, an opportunity cost of $40,000. The buy option does not have an opportunity cost because no benefit would be given up if the buy option is chosen. So that would be a dash. $40,000 minus zero is equal to $40,000 under the fourth column, showing the operating income increase or decrease. If we total all the columns, the make column now has a total cost of $362,000. The buy column has a total cost of $357,000 and the change in operating income is an increase of $5,000. In this case, the company's operating income will increase, indicated by the number being positive, by a total of $5,000 if the company decided to buy the component. The company, given this information, should switch to buying the component because of the savings of $5,000 in operating income. Management would still have to consider qualitative factors, step four in our incremental analysis. Even though no information was given, we can speculate. For example, if the switch to buying the component caused employee layoffs, there may be a negative impact on the morale of the remaining employees. This may lead to reductions in productivity. In addition, management would have to consider if the supplier is always able to deliver the product on time, or if the supplier can adjust their production for changes in volume should customer demand change. Finally, how long will the supplier's price remain at $12.75 per unit? That will most likely not last forever. Note that $5,000 is a small amount to save, only 1.4% of the total cost to make the product. I calculated this as $5,000 divided by $362,000. So, if there are negative qualitative factors, management may decide that the $5,000 of savings from buying the component is not worth it. Step five is to make a recommendation, a decision. We saw that the quantitative analysis considered alone would make our recommendation be to buy the component. But if the qualitative factors outweigh the quantitative analysis, it may be that our recommendation would be to continue to make the product in-house. Management alone would be able to make that decision. Note that we have just applied the steps in the incremental analysis to the make or buy decision. The make or buy decision, also called outsourcing, can become quite complex, particularly if we add in factors such as savings on fixed costs, which this video didn't cover, or an opportunity cost, which we did. Regardless, the application of the steps in incremental analysis will help you to analyze any outsourcing decision. Thanks so much for watching.